Hello everyone, Mr. Terminal here for Cloud Infrastructure Services. In this video, we are looking into deploying secure FTP server on Windows 2019. And yeah, so the link for the marketplace is provided. We are going to continue with configuration. And we are going to choose the delivery method. Region is fine. Perfect. Yeah. Defaults are okay. Let's continue to launch. Launch instead of launch from website, launch through EC2. Press launch. T2 micro is perfect. Let me just check. Yeah, you can review and launch it. And launch. Create a new key pair. We just call it FileZilla. Create and launch the instance. Let's look into our instances. They are pending state right now. It's So this is a Windows system. So of course, what we're gonna do is select it and should be able to connect it connect to it using the RDB client and you can download, you have to download the remote desktop file to connect to it. Once that's done, you, our username is administrator, you have to get password and sometimes you have to wait a while. So let's see. Yeah, it's not available right now. So give it some time and you can click it back again and you will get your password through which we can log in. Yeah, after some time, if you try it, you would get these options to browse your key pair and add that key pair that won't be downloaded while creating the instance. So browse that and add it. Once you have added, just decrypt the password and you're good to go. You should have your password copied somewhere anywhere you want to keep it safe. To connect to the Windows instance, Open the RDB file we downloaded and press connect. Enter the password we just copied and OK. Yes. Once the Windows is started, you will find FileZilla server. On the desktop, that's what you want to open. Connect to server. Okay, we are already connected. So we are already connected. If you are not connected, then select the host as localhost and port number as 14147. And just press connect and you should be connected if not connected by default. You should now be connected. If not, 
and you are seeing some connection errors and NAD errors, that's normal because we need to complete some configuration. For passive mode, go to edit settings and in passive mode settings, make sure this is from 50,000 to 51,000 and enabled, checked. Next, you should make sure, and it is by default, you do have a layer public IP address, but you need to copy it. You need to go to the instance and you can see it even here. This is your public IP address. If you go into details, you can see it a bit more clearly. This is your public IP address. So copy it. Now, once you have the public IP address associated with your AWS VM, add the IP address to the passive mode settings. So what we're gonna do, we are going to go back to settings and in passive mode. Instead of default, we're going to select use this following IP address and copy it and paste it from there. And yeah. The next step is to create a set of new private key and self-signed certificate needed by FileZilla server to accept the TLS connections. Just Go to the settings again and here in SSL TLS settings, enable FTP over SSL slash TLS support. Now here, I want you to go to generate uh, and of course keep this in check and keep force prot p to encrypt file transfers is SSL slash TSL. Make sure all these are checked. Here, you know, I want you to, it's, so 990 by default keep that and here you want to generate a new certificate 1024 bit is okay two digit country code let's just write it as uk for example and this is fill in your company details whatever your organization is i'm just going with test Now here in common name and server address, you want to paste your public IP address again. And that's it. Save key to this file. Just choose a directory. I'm just going to save it in my documents. Perfect. Save. And generate the certificate. Certificate generated successfully. Great. Okay. It's To set up users there are two options either create local users and assign them access or integrate active directory and allow users to use their domain logins to authenticate so if you want to create local users and assign access just go to edit users and in shared folders you can add your user first let's just say top of course, if you want to create groups, you can do that, but right now they're none. And directories we can add, let's say, downloads. So that's what you are giving access to. Write, delete, append, create, delete. This is the access that we are setting, and you can add more users as well. No, Diana, I don't want you to go that star. Right. So this is how you can add do it locally. And now if you want your active director integrated, we go to edit and settings. In settings, we can get the LDAP, and here you have to add the server IP address, whatever it is. I don't have an active directory set up at the moment, and port number will be 389. Your domain, whatever it is. To that, of course, check this and check enable TLS SL and press OK. You should be good to go. Well, after you're done that. And if you want to add users, go back to edit users in the journal. 
here what you want to do is of course make sure enable account is there let me remove these in case you are just coming around and yeah here you want to add users with their domain and their ids just how their login upn is so it could be any user at your domain.com type of and user at your domain.com and if it's of course in the group you can uh point being you have to specify the the domain and completely give them access do not enable the password that's the one they will be using it in the right to directory that's where it will be checked so do not enable it here you want to what you want to do is make sure local and ldap are checked after that you can just press ok and you're of course you need to add directory to the user so i'm just going to go to downloads and you're good to go with that setting one last note before i close off the video is you need to check the security of your instance so if you deploy it the way i did it's not an issue you are completely fine but if you are doing something out of the way and manual then you need to check these ports are allowed to enable from any source 21 50 000, 51 000. these are all required ports and yeah 990 and 3389 so to, this is for ftp 21 and 990 is for ftps and these are these are required for data transfer so make sure these are enabled yeah and then you're good to go with the server just a side note and if you require any other assistance and documentation it is provided in the description if this video helped you please like and subscribe thanks for watching